Father, we just thank you that we can go before your throne today. Yes. And we can ask Holy Spirit to make this word alive to us today. But this is more than black and white. This is actually your heart and your mind concerning your people. Lord, I just pray that you open our hearts today and our spirits to receive the engrafted word of God that is constantly, continually saving our souls. And Lord, we live in times that we need your word more than anything else. We need you. And we need your word in your spirit. And I pray today that everyone that comes today doesn't leave the same way they came, not because of me, but because of your word and because of the Holy Spirit of God. So, Father, we thank you. And we ask you to bless this meeting. And Jesus, everybody say, yeah, let's go to finally chapter four of Revelation. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you, and you guys, are, you, you, have no, you have no idea how many hours it takes me to dilute when I, when I come here, you have no idea. I've had to cut some things. Hey, Bruce, can we have a cup of Bruce? Come on out of here. Hey, they were clapping for me. They clap for you too, might as well. Anybody else we should clap for? No. But, um, yeah, because, you know, one thing about facilitating, you have to hear what the Spirit of God wants to speak. I'm nothing but a donkey. I mean, I spend the whole, for example, yeah, I'm nothing but a donkey. I'm nothing but a donkey. And um, so I have to be very selective, very careful. I mean, I'm, I'm, I read about four or five books a week for reference to come to class. Because you have a book, by the way. That book you have, we're going to start using and accept that. When we go into the all, all the different symbols, because, you know, it can drive you crazy. Mm -hmm. It can this The book of Revelation can drive you crazy, especially if you're reading it from a natural perspective. And not a spiritual perspective, okay? So pretty soon, <laughs> you'll see. But in the meantime, hold on to your book. But we're going to the Word of God. As we're going to continue. Um, so let's start with chapter 4, verse 1. After this, this is, the, you know, of course, this is John, of course. Now, I, I find it interesting that I believe, and I've gone back to some of the scholars that I looked at, that I look on, upon. They're saying that there was a, that there is a gap between chapter, the end of chapter 3, and verse 1 of chapter 4. Okay, why? Because they're talking about two different situations. When, when, when John opens up in Re Revelation 1 and Revelation 2 and 3, the Bible says he, that he was in the spirit. Okay, but all of a sudden, after he starts talking about the churches, something else happened because he has to go again in the spirit again to heaven. You, you follow me so far? And that's beautiful because, you know, the Bible says that we're, that we're to come before his throne and I'm going to show you by scripture how many different people in the Bible had the experience that John that that, that John the Revelator had, had, and you and I can have. That's what the Bible says that we can come before His throne, okay, before His throne, because Christ paved the way how by His blood, which means your prayer does not open the gates of heaven for you. I'm sorry to tell you that your fasting does not open the gates. What op what has opened the gate permanently is the blood of Jesus. <laughs> okay, even your worship doesn't open the gate. Now you worship when you get there, but your your worship doesn't necessarily open your, your the gates. It's because the Bible says that Jesus paved the better way into heaven by what? 
by his blood. So when we come before to worship, we have to be conscious that we're worshiping and speaking because of the blood of Christ. Amen to that? Our sins are forgiven, but also the blood is what broke the veil when Jesus, remember the Bible said that the veil broke when Jesus died. And so now we have access 24 hours a day. <laughs> you know, we don't have to beg God. We can come in through, you know, through, through worship, of course, but the, but the door's already open. So here, here we go. After this, I looked and behold, a door. Are you a cat? Is that my cat? I'm hearing this. Baby, like a baby. Child. Oh my God, my cat sounds like a baby, my baby, right? Now. I thought it was Gigi. Oh my God, I, I just felt like, okay. After the, by the way, she scratched me. It wasn't, I went to grab her. She was in the fridge and I grabbed her the wrong way and she fell, but it wasn't, she didn't intend to scratch me. But let her, you know, don't think, oh. don't think I had a fight with a woman or something or somebody beat me up. Okay. So just thank So after this, I looked and behold, now remember, he has to look. <laughs> he says, after this, I looked and behold, a door standing. Listen, you find what you look for, man. Yeah. If your eyes are not open in the spirit realm, you're not going to see the things of the spirit. Paul said that the natural man cannot perceive the things of the spirit and that the carnal man persecutes the things of the spirit. So apparently, uh, after he has the experience, he, he gets a seven message for seven churches. We we spent about, I think, three months on them. Anyway, thank God for that. Behold, a door, uh, a door standing open, it's standing up in heaven. And the first voice which I heard like the sound of a trumpet speaking. Now scholars say here that 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 sound of a trumpet was a trumpet to a war to gather people. That's their perspective. I want to agree with it, and we're going to see why later. It says that that because I'm, I'm using the amplifier now, and I heard like the sound. Now remember, like a sound. Understand this when you book when you look at the Revelation. John doesn't have the capacity. To, to exactly write exactly what he's seen. It's in, because remember, God likes to hide things. <laughs> Only the secrets of the Lord are those that what? That know how to go for them, how to seek. And you, you find the secrets of God when you seek his face. He goes and scream his secret. Hey, you got to get saved. He don't do that. Only the people that are close, that seek intimacy, are they able to hear the secrets of God. Because God never scatters or blow or broadcast his secrets. If not, if he has to broadcast it, it's no longer secret. Everybody in the mother knows what he said. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. So there's powerful. Apparently, John, by the way, John was the youngest of all the apostles, and he was the last one to die, according to, to the scholars. Last one to die. So, and by the way, he didn't die. He didn't die as a as a as a martyr either. Interesting. Of all the apostles, John was the one. And remember, John was the one that Jesus what? Put his head on his shoulder, and, and he trusted his mother with him. Okay, so there was a unique relationship between John and Jesus. Of course, there were brothers as well in the natural, but still, still, there was a special love for John. You know, while, while, while Peter bragged about how much he loved Jesus, right, because he denied him. Yet, Jesus uh, uh, bragged about how much he loved, how much Jesus loved John. <laughs> Difference. Peter bragged about his love for Jesus. Yet John bragged about Jesus' love for him. Not the same. So here's a special guy, apparently. And only special people are the other ones that get the access to these beautiful things. Hello. And you're going to really understand this. Listen, I, I can read you to you, talk, house, come home. But if you don't spend time in your house, my, my goal is to whet your appetite. And for you to come to your own conclusion. Hello. Because, you know, what I believe ain't going to affect you. <laughs> And what you believe is going to affect me. Okay, and that's why it's important to not just come, which I'm, I love the fact that you guys come every week. You guys should get a Grammy Award for that. But unfortunately, it doesn't go that way. It's when you go home and you take some time. You see, let me go back. And, and you know, wow. And then you learn the, oh, by yourself. Because the same spirit that's in the classroom is the same spirit that goes with you when you go home. Amen to that? So after this, I heard... A, I, I heard the first voice, which I heard like the sound of a war trumpet speaking to me, saying, come up here. Now, remember, he was earlier in the spirit. So Paul talked about, remember, the one, two, the, like the, the third heaven. Remember that? So apparently here in, in this particular passage, the, the, uh, the Lord's telling, listen, I want you to come a little higher. 
a little higher in heaven because heaven has different have, have different partitions. I call them partitions. Okay. So this is where the real deal, before he's hearing things, and now for the first time he gets a glimpse, and this is what Revelation does, it gives us a, a, a glimpse of what's taking place. But the problem with this is, he's saying, he, a lot of times he says, like this, like that. He's, he's using expressions in the natural to try to define something in the spiritual realm, and that's impossible. So even though John had a revelation and he was able to panic, can I tell you something? I don't want to blow your theology, but even some of the stuff here, it comes short to what the reality of what's taking place in heaven. Remember that. Well, what, what, so also, we don't get the differentiation of with heaven either. That's correct. That Doesn't was... matter, but he was in heaven. <laughs> okay, because we can't be... He was in heaven. He was in another, because now he tells him to come higher, and, and he, says, he says, come up. He says, come up here, and I wish to come up here, and I will show you what must take place after these things. Now, going back to my point, as great as John the Revelator did to try to convey the things that he's seen, okay, I want you to go to, I want you to go to write this down, 2 Corinthians 12, 2 and 4, 2 Corinthians 2, Chapter two, or chapter yeah, Second Corinthians chapter twelve, verse two through four. Second Corinthians chapter twelve, verse two and four. Because you know we're talking about this experience, and this this is Paul talking about an experience that he seen somebody have. Now, scholars said it could have been him. I doubt that it was really him. I, I think he's referring to John, but again, it could be somebody else. The important thing is that he's talking about someone. Amen. So everybody say someone. So I know a man, you have it, say amen. He says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Okay. Whether it's the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up, not the word rapture. Remember, the word rapture is illegal in this class. When we get through with this book, you're going to find out why rapture is not even in the original manuscript. Stop it. We have a scholar over there. <laughs> it's a Greek word for us. But my point is this. Because when you look at the way rapture, well, you take something, you rapture, you kind of break it, you, you tear it down, right? you grab it, you, you know, we, I don't know about you, but I'm waiting for the, I, I'm dying for the coming of Christ to come. Yeah. I'm expecting it. I'm not going to, Okay, yeah. it's gonna take him by surprise in a sense that I don't know what date it is, but I'm ready for it, baby. When it comes, I'm back, ready to go. I got a brother that, matter of fact, I'm gonna go see tomorrow. He's about to give up the ghost, and I told him, "Listen, I'm glad that he's gonna go to heaven because every time I come see him, if I show you a picture, I see like this. I swear he spends weeks like that in bed, in conscience. I said, "Okay, that's not life. He's a believer." So I said, "Lord, I told Lord last time I told, I said, Lord." Take them, take them home. Not enough for people to come suffer, you know. Listen, I'd rather suffer his absence physically and know that he's in the streets in heaven, enjoying the, the streets of gold and seeing my daddy, my mommy, and anybody in the mother that, that, that know the Lord, than to have him stay because, I, because my flesh wants to be selfish and say, I miss you. But I'd rather miss him in heaven. <laughs> have him be whole. I had to tell all my family, listen, guys, stop trying the blues. I know, of course, we're natural, we're tribe beings. I understand that. But you know what? He's the one suffering, not me. He's in pain that his kids come to see him. Like, you know, so I said, listen, just let's let it go. Let him go. Let's, let's believe the Lord. So I'm believing that by his birthday, he's going to go to heaven. I said, Lord, if you don't heal him, take him home. I've done that with four people in my life, man. Four people. I've gone. So don't be careful. Don't be nice to me. You know? <laughs> my, my mother and my dad. I was for three years. I was visiting St. Peter every weekend to go see my mother, and she's she, she's down there. On August fourth, my birthday is August seventh. I said, Lord, you know what? This is not fair. I rather I told her, let's make an exchange. Take her. Let me miss her. First. Let me miss her on the earth, knowing that she's in heaven, and you can, you know let her go get a reward in heaven because she was a godly woman. Okay, so I'll suffer her departure. Because you know why I'm suffering? I'm suffering because I see her physically in that condition. Take her. On August 7th, three days later, my birthday, I didn't, even, I didn't even think about it. At four in the morning, my mother passed away in peace in bed. Same thing with my father. So 
I'm not there that some people are having don't get an idea, but I'm just saying I'm just saying that you know, people make the and the Bible says that the death of the righteous is like a savor, favor to savor to the Lord. I wonder why it was so great for John. He suffered the loss of all of his brothers that huh? did not walk the earth with the Savior. And and so he's the last. Mm -hmm. that, that had to have been just wrench, gut wrenching, but yet joyous because he knows yeah. there was mm -hmm. no one. Listen, and this one thing about this class you, this is not to scare you, this is to prepare you guys. You should, when you see things happening, you should be pa getting, pa keep packing your bags. We're going up beyond the moment the song passes things. We're going up beyond the. I'm talking stuff about it. <laughs> so. Here's what he said. Let's go back to the verse. So second minister, he said in the second part, and I know that this man was caught up into paradise, whether it's in the body or out of the body. I do not know. God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. Which means that I, I'm believing that he could have probably be referring to John. To John. Mm -hmm. So I'm believing that John did his be the best he could to try to describe the things that he's seen. But the, the issue with that I have is that you cannot, uh, remember, a person that's already in heaven, we're going to talk about the 24 elders, by the way. What does that mean, the 24 elders? They're more qualified because they're living in heaven. They're walking up and down. They're doing their thing, and they're bound to Jesus versus the guy that's in, he's still in the physical, natural form, and he has to, he has to get in the spirit somewhat to, to discern and hear what God is saying. So I believe, as great as he tried to do a job, I don't think he did a complete job because the things of God are never revealed until you get to heaven. There are a lot of things that I'm going to have a list of questions in my ex the Lord. And I read in his word and just said, well, this doesn't make sense. But you know what? You said it, so I want you to explain to me. So I believe that as great as he did of a job, I don't think he did it according to, 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 to Paul. I don't think that he had the ability and the natural to take something from a spiritual uh, perspective and bring it down to an earthly perspective and try to explain it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because the natural man cannot discern the things of the spirit. Although he was in the spirit, but he was still natural. Well, these guys that are in heaven, all the apostles that went to heaven, they're, they're not natural, they're spiritual all the way. So to me, they are, they're better qualified to describe and write down everything they've seen. You get me so far? Are we okay? Did I lose anybody here? Okay, amen. So let's keep reading. Let's go to 2 Kings 2.11. 2 Kings 2.11. This is talking about, you know, people that have gone on to heaven. 2 Kings 2.11. Why don't you read it for us, Bruce? Mr. Bruce, since you came late to class, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, you, you, your wife did a good job excusing you. I'm telling you. You, you guys had a fight. On you. <laughs> 2 Kings 2.11. Write it down so you have the, the, these are reference talking about John being transported to heaven. This is not the first time it happened. The peach? I guess we have no Italian, no Italians in the house. Okay. Then it happened as they continued and walked and talked. And suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah <laughs> went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Here's another man. That once, but with him, he never came back. Although he, although he left his mantle behind. Okay, interesting. <laughs> Here's another one. Let's go to let's go to Genesis five twenty four. Go go ahead, uh, Genesis five twenty four. Who has it? <coughs> Genesis five twenty four. Genesis five twenty four. Well, come on. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. There's another guy gets transported, but never comes back. John had the blessing to go on over there and being a natural person and coming back, which I found very interesting. <laughs> of all the people, let's go one more. Let's go to Hebrews 4 16. Get somebody besides Bruce. Hebrews 4 16. <laughs> Hebrews 4 16. Uh, come on. Uh, Somebody volunteer. Don't go volunteer at once, please. <laughs> Hebrews 4.16. Matter of fact, this should be a verse you guys should memorize. Powerful verse. Because this, this is uh, how we uh, 
how we roll on the earth. Who has it? Hebrews 4.16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Do me obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. <laughs> What's the Apostle Paul saying? That we have access in the spirit realm to get up there, okay? Because remember, when you go, there's nothing you just do. You're there to, to have, have an experience with the Lord. And of course, you do it through prayer, but the, the member, the curtain was, was ripped up in half, and now we can go before the Lord and his throne. How? Because of the blood of Jesus. So that, that's an open gate for us right now. Your singing in church doesn't open the gate for heaven. That gate's been opened at the cross, period. So you know what you get? It's like, it's like an open door. Look, the gate's there. This door here, it's already open. I don't have to open it. Why? Because the blood of Christ paved the way and opened, paid the price for us to go up in, in the spirit realm and do prayers we worship. But it's already open. You don't have to be knocking. Now, when Jesus said, uh, whoever shall knock shall open, can I tell you something? That's under the old covenant. Because he, Jesus had not died yet. Remember, the covenant, the new covenant begins the moment Jesus dies. Paul said, unless the, per, uh, the person that the, the person who, who, who wrote the testament has to die for it to be executed. So Jesus, his, his covenant became a reality the moment he died. So we don't have to be pushing the door down. This, the people sing, open the, open the gates, open the some there's a song out there in worship. Yeah, no, no, not that. The heaven. Um, <laughs> nice try. <laughs> open something about the heavens. Listen, heaven's open for us. Why? Because Not because of us, but because of the blood of the Lamb that made a way and have, we have access to heaven. Just remember that. Okay, and remember Paul Go. I mean, Paul John C. And he, he all of a sudden he sees it and then he still, the Holy Ghost says, get up now. I want you to get up. Get up. Go in, I want you to go yonder. Go up yonder. That's what he did. And when he, when he goes in the spirit, and I know people that listen, I had an experience, it'll be 50, it'll be 50 years October this year, October 16. I had an experience that changed my life 50 years ago, and I'm still living off it 50 years ago. I was a junkie, stronger than 100,000 dope a day. I was, my father was, my father was a, God bless him, may he rest in peace. He was a great pastor, but he was a horrible father. He had 12 kids, you know, he's, the church was more important to him. I love my dad. I'm, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm just saying, I'm speaking the truth, in love. He was, a, he, his thing was the church, 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 the family didn't exist. He had 12 kids, and the family didn't exist. So we all started using drugs. We went down, we found, yeah, we found a friend in, in we found a friend in, in heroin, or whatever. My sister was the same way, my brother was the same way. And you know, so you couldn't come talk to me about Jesus, because I, to me, the Jesus I knew was the one that my father took the church over his children. Okay? My father never told me he loved me until day to day before I buried him. But I'm glad that I met my father in heaven. And I love my, you know, I respect my, I honor my father. I'm, please don't get me, I don't want you to think that I'm bashing him. But I'm speaking the truth in love. That's the truth. You know, when something is true, it's truth. If I tell you this war is white, I'm going to tell you it's gray, it's white. Hello? That's being honest. Without being uh, judgmental. Same thing as Samuel, uh, the judge uh, Samuel had, where he yeah. did, uh, did neglected his children for. Yeah, something. and so was Eli too, the priesthood. Yeah. And you know, and and when it comes when it comes to the Lord, your family is your first ministry, not the church. Yeah. And that's where we were. So we know we we found friends outside the church, and you know we started using drugs and copying. So one day I go to a church service. Because I had it, I had it, God, I had it everything that my father talked about, because he talked about a God. But it, but you know, one thing was in the pulpit, same one thing. But when he was home, he was a devil. He was a devil. He acted like a devil. Again, I forget, I have no issues. I forget him. I love him. You know, I, I, I would always go and bless him and pray every time I go see him. My point is this. So I had a bad concept of God. And it was hard for somebody to talk to me because I, you're talking about Jesus. Man, the Jesus I know, he hates you. He, 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 he wants to destroy you. He wants to hold you captive, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I go to a church, two car batteries, and all of a sudden, I, that night I get saved. Something told me, don't touch those batteries. So I go to the front, I give my, my heart to the Lord, and that old man lay hands on me, 
and I fell to the floor for an hour. I was an hour under the power of the Holy Spirit. I was I was a 15-year-old kid addicted to hundred dollars of pure heroin, not the heroin today, but the pure heroin. And I was shocking. I was shaking. I couldn't. I couldn't open my. I was like an hour. I couldn't open my eyes. And what I could think was, I see these things, these lightning bolts hitting me like a. I'm feeling like a lightning bolt hit from head to toe. I mean, nonstop. And I remember when I was when I was when I was 12 years old, 11 years old. My mother would always take me into the prayer room. Of all the 12, I was one. I was Samuel. She would always take me into the prayer chamber. Always. I was. You know, I, I always sometimes hide from my brother when I did something bad to them. I would go and pray, go inside my prayer chamber. My mother. Because I didn't, I didn't want my brothers to beat me up, you know? I was a bad boy. I was the devil disguised in name in Samuel. Honestly, I was. And so, you know, I, I remember that because I was at the 12, I was the closest one to my mother, that I didn't want my, my mother to know that, that I was shooting heroin like my other brothers were. So I, I was wearing, I have a habit of wearing long stickers. It's something that I just never get over, my long sleeve shirt. I'm always wearing long stickers. I have a, it, I'm so... The thing is that I remember that I'm, I'm seeing this electric shop hitting me day and night. I mean, for now, I, I couldn't even get up. I was stuck in the floor, shaking. I don't know what's going on. And uh, when I woke up, the old man said, Pastor, I must keep you here, and I'm going to take you tomorrow to Teen Challenge. So said, okay. So and so when I'm in Teen Challenge, that's where I made Dave Wilkerson. So here's what happens. Um, I, I, you know, I, I didn't realize that, that, my, that, my, that my tracks were all erased. Or more the drugs that I use. That was a supernatural yeah. intervention of God. That was 50 years ago, and they have not got back to drugs ever. So what? I, I, I encounter the living God, the living Christ in heaven. <laughs> Let me tell you, I want you to go Isaiah. I'm, I feel the presence of God so strong that for me. Go to Isaiah 6. I want you to see this real important. Isaiah, Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 6. Mm. Something happens when we actually get to that place where we have an encounter with, with the Lord <laughs> in, in a way like that, you know? I'm not saying everybody's going to have a radical experience. You know, you could have an experience real quiet. That's fine. Doesn't, you know, we are different. We're different people. God knows how to relate to us. See, I needed to be, I needed to be shaken because I thought I knew who God was and I didn't know God at all. <laughs> you can't tell a kid that was forced to memorize scripture at the age of 10 years old about you can't tell me about the word because I knew the Bible. I knew the Bible, but never met the author. And to that day in that experience, I got to meet the author. But look what happened to the prophet Isaiah in chapter six. You have a say amen. In the you remember, we're talking about John being transported, okay. Here goes another guy in, in Isaiah 6. In that year, the king, by the way, King Uzziah was uh, Isaiah's cousin. You know, you got, you know, cousin Vinny, cousin Guido. That's the kind of thing we have. <laughs> Isaiah 6. Guido? 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 Guido. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw in a vision the Lord sitting on the throne, high and exalted with the train of his royal robe, filling the most holy place of the temple. I mean, from the Amplified. The Amplified Bible. Above him, suffering, happily be being stood, each one has six wings. With two wings, he covered his face. With two wings, he covered his feet. And with two wings, he flew. And one called out, one saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And the foundations of the threshold tremble at the voice of him who called out, and the temple was filling with smoke. Then I said, woe is me, for I am ruined because of I, I'm a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the sufferings flew to me with a burning coal in his hand, which he had taken from the altar with tongues. He touched my mouth, and he said, listen carefully. This has touched your lips. Your wickedness, your sin, your injustice, your wrongdoing is taken away and your sin atoned for and forgiven. Isn't that powerful? Here's a powerful Isaiah. Has an experience, a spiritual, an, 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 an epiphany. <laughs> That's what he had. Now listen, if Paul said that we have access to the throne of God, guess what? We all can have our experiences. Oh, just, Isaiah served the same God we serve. Paul served the same God 
we serve, uh, John served the same Christ and God we serve. No difference. But you know what things about God? If you're in a hungry food, you don't eat it. You're going to be hungry. No, I don't want you to get all spooky and get, become a bunch of uh, mystical people. Though you, you know, because experiences are great as long as they're based on the Word of God. When I was a kid, I must confess, I used this paper to smoke marijuana. Cigarette paper. Because I had no conscience of God. Yeah? No conscience of God. I know people that took us and they'll, they'll read the book of Revelation. They'll be, oh my God. It's like they're, they're seeing me more than what John Revelator spoke about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, but guess what? The same Christ, the same God that, that these gentlemen, these both men of God seen, experienced, we have the same honor we want to. But we have to what? Be hungry and thirsty for the things of God. Amen? Let's keep reading. So I look and behold, a door standing open in heaven. Let's go to the next one. He says, come up here. Right? Revelation. We're back in Revelation. We're back in Revelation. The book of... Is it, does anybody remember what the name, what the word, besides you, John? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the word revelation means in the Greek? Huh? Ooh, good. Good. Okay, that's one. Okay. <laughs> Let's go back to verse. Um, what does it mean? What's revealed becomes un what uh, comes oh, undisclosed. Yeah. It's close. Oh, undisclosed. Okay. Undisclosed, but but becomes becomes um, it, whatever has been hidden now becomes undisclosed. It becomes disclosed now. Mm -hmm. it, it it becomes naked in the eye yes. to be to see. And that's why John's everything he's writing is what he's seen. He's seen it. It was revealed to him. It was all oh. okay. So at once, verse three. At once, I was in the spiritual. This 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 translation said when it comes to I was in the spirit. It means special communication with the spirit. And behold, a throne. What is the first thing he's seen? Isn't that beautiful? What is the first thing John sees? John sees when he goes to heaven. He first mentions the what? The throne. Why? Because the Paul said that we are to what? Listen, by the way, stop going to the cross, folks. Yes. You got no business going to the cross. Because the body, first of all, the cross is nothing but a piece of wood. When Paul talks about about the message of the cross, he's not referring to the piece of wood. He's referring to what happened do at that piece of wood. The piece of wood did not shed blood for you. The piece of wood did not save you. What saved you was a man that gave his blood for you, and because of that sacrifice today, you and I are saved. People, you know, we've done as Christians with the cross what Catholics have done with Mary. Paul said, what to come before the throne, not before the cross. You go to the cross, there's nobody there. <laughs> First of all, you ain't got no business going to the cross if you're a believer. Now, coming, getting saved, yes. But once you're saved, baby, you got the throne to go to now. You don't go back to the cross, he's not there. And the Bible says that we have an advocate now. And the Bible says that that sacrifice was past, present, and future sins, which means even the sins you, come, you and I commit today, have been dealt with at the cross today. Amen. So you Amen. start beating yourself with, that's not, that's the devil playing with you. Oh, look what you did last week. And you know, you look at that guy or that girl, and my God, you, you, that's the devil lying to you. You confess, listen, Lord, I'm, I, I fell short. I'm sorry. And you, you wash me with your blood. David said it right. But now because of the sacrifice of the Christ, every penalty for our sins has, was taken upon Jesus' body now. So if you make a mistake of your sin, don't beat yourself up. Go to your big brother. He'll defend you. The Bible says in John 1 John 2, we have an advocate with the Father. If anyone sin, we have an advocate. If we sin, if we sin, we have a Father. That's we have an advocate with the Father. Hello, people. It's getting quiet. This Lutheran yeah. church. Where's where's the throne? The throne says, as they say, by the wording here, it's in the fixed center of the universe. Well. I'm not gonna go. That's 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 another. I don't want to get so technical. But is that another class? I'll tell you something else. <laughs> let me tell you. What, let me tell you what the true throne, according to the new covenant, the throne of God now is in your heart. 
That's where your spirit is at. That's where everything takes place. That's where you make decisions. That's where you think about things. And that's when you, when Christ comes, the Bible says, and Jesus came into your heart. He, he lives in you now. Hello. The center of your life is your spirit, is your heart. Although, yes, the God, of course, the God lives. Remember, we're the body of Christ now. Hello. Where's the head? The head is where? In heaven, he's no longer at the cross. He's sitting by the right hand of the Father in the throne. And so these elders, you're going to see soon, they were sitting also with Jesus in, in, in the same, same place where, they, where Jesus was sitting at. Because, because there's a reward for those that hang out, hang this, hang out to the end. Reward that we're going to also reign and have a crown. Some of you guys have a crown so big, your, your head's not big enough to hold it. I mean that. All your works, everything you've done, everything you've done in heaven and on earth for the Lord is being recorded. Every every, every alms you gave, the Bible says Hebrews 6 10, that God will not forget the labor of love that we have done to the saints. So in, in heaven, there's we're gonna talk about the, in the few chapters from now, memorial books. What are those books for? Your good works are being recorded. Matter of fact, even your idle words are being recorded too. <laughs> Be careful what you say. I'm not here to escape, but I'm here to prepare you. <laughs> he said that we'll be judged by every idle word that we speak, which means words that don't edify, words that don't give God glory. Let's keep going. And once, let me go to my other Bible because this Bible sometimes gets a little bit, a little bit, uh, let's go to King James, the new King James. Okay, so, um, in verse two, immediately I was in the spirit and behold, the throne set in heaven, and one, here it goes, and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and sun. Now, once you see something, when you look at these, oh, come on, ladies, you guys can help me. The colors of, what's, what, what's the color for jasper? When you have a jasper ring, what color is it? Mostly red. What is it? Mostly red. Yeah. And what is red? A type of the blood of Christ. What? Sacrifice of Christ. And, 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 what, and what about the other one? The emerald. What color is emerald? Green. Green. The hope. Green is the color of hope. Huh? So, and saw the stone in appearance, and there was a rainbow around it. Listen, that's what the LGTB can't touch this. <laughs> The, why do you think it's the rainbow? It's a reminder of the mercy and the goodness of God towards mankind. It, said, it was around the throne. Think about the, this whole setting. And there was a rainbow around the throne, and it was in appearance like an emerald. Like an emerald. Think about that. Yeah. He's using the term like, like, like this, like that. Why? Because he, he's having a difficult kind to be uh, exactly what he's seeing. Okay? Around the throne, what? Well, what? Now, who do you think are the 24 elders here? Hey, come on, stop. No, I don't want Wanda. I don't want John. You guys are forbidden to talk. And also you too, uh, Rabbi <laughs> Jeffy. Sorry. Who, who do you think are the 12 of the 24 elders here? In your opinion. It's okay. There's no such thing as a bad answer. Just, just give me. Hit me with your best shot. Go ahead. Come on. Come on, somebody. If I'm not going to call on you. Kingdom. Okay. Let's go. Come on. The kingdom, okay. Let represent people. What else? Who else? Come on. Oh, oh, John. Sir? Terry? What else? But that's 24, though. Why? Because the Bible talks that those that have been faithful to the end shall go and reign and have a crown in their head. Remember these. You're going to see what these elders have. A lot of scholars say that, yes, that that 24, it rep represents a priesthood because 24 is, remember, they had 24 people, 24 hours at all times doing the sacrifice in the Old Testament. But again, some scholars say it was the 12 disciples, mm -hmm. which doesn't include Judas. Why would John recognize them? Well, identify them? Yeah. well again, I tell you, this is part of, that's why it's called a, a revelation. It's just, it's something that he's seen and he, Pen it down like it. That's why I believe I I I've always said from the beginning. This beautiful book is nothing but a, a tithe of who God is. Even the Bible says in John that if we were to record all the things that Jesus did, there would not be enough books to contain what he did. 
But this book is to what? Once you get in the spirit, is to have you, this is the only book that you get to meet the author. Hallelujah. It's the only book in the world that you can read it every time. Well, the author says, how are you, sir? <laughs> okay, let's take a five minute break. It's 12, it's, uh, we got 40 minutes left. Somebody take a five minute break and come back. And we'll continue. All right? <clears throat> Five minutes. Está bien, está bien. Está bien, muy bien. Sean, we got a one. Sean, the road, Sean, the road. Sean, the road. What is this? Well, somebody calls that. Uh, can you call that? Okay, people, your break is up. How are you? Uh, ten, two. No, I, I need a salt. Two, Tell them, John. Okay, game is over. Party time is over. Okay. Let's go to let's go back to um let's go to verse four. Verse four, chapter four, Revelation. Okay. Around the throne were twenty-four th uh, thrones, which means each elder had a throne. Now, what is in your opinion, what, what is define to me though in your in your experience in Christianity? How do you define an elder? Now forget about age. No, don't, don't define to me the word elder. When when the Bible uses the word elder, what does it what does that mean to you as a, 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 as a believer? Wisdom. Wisdom, okay. Mm -hmm. What else? Lives a pure life. Yeah. Okay. The Bible has certain requirements for an elder. Keep going, that's good. We have wisdom, pure life. What else? Teacher. Okay, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somewhat, yeah. Now watch, these elders also have white robes. That's the reason why. When we come to Christ, what happens? Sure. That, 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 um, that rope of the filth and sin and all that stuff is taken away from us. And the Bible says that we put on the rope of righteousness upon the Christ. His, his, his purity becomes part of us now. His righteousness becomes our righteousness. We're righteous not because we, we're right. We're righteous because he made us right at the cross. So whatever we get from God is because he did it, not we did it. Does that make any sense? So you don't have to worship the Lord to, to be righteous. His, his, his sacrifice at the cross, his blood made you righteous, period. Now, I'm not saying you don't pray. I'm a man of prayer. I fast. I have my man of fasting. But I don't fast to be righteous. <laughs> because, you know, when you fast, you you turn, you take your soul and your body, and you tell your soul and your body that, that the, your spirit is king. Your soul and your body is not your king anymore. Okay? You get that, guys? So you some, fasting is about you, not about God. God doesn't need your fasting. Hello? You need the fasting. Because you need to put yourself under under the meaning. So subject, you Paul said that as subject. What do you say? What is it? What is it? If you if you win the whole world and lose your own soul, you know, ministry can become a mistress if you don't watch yourself. I know because I've been there. Ministry can become a mistress. That it takes the place of even your intimacy with the Lord, and you 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 equate. Serving people for spending time with the Lord, and it doesn't work that way. Your time with the Lord is one thing, your time with ministers is another. And many people, any ministers, they get burned out. They get burned out. Why? Because they, they forget that it's always coming to the feet of Jesus. Even Jesus, when he ministered to the crowd, he said, He'll leave the disciples and go to the mountain and spend the whole night praying. But she recognized that he needed that intimacy with the Father. Amen. So that's for another. Here it goes. Another has white robes. Why? Because they had crown on their heads. I want you to see the scripture, okay? Go to, um, let's go to, let's go to Revelations. Uh, let's go to, Re no, let's, let's, do this. let's go to Revelations 2.10. Look at the promise in Revelations 2.10. The book of Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. <laughs> These elders well, being to the end that when, when they went to heaven, this Revelation is 2 to 10. What are you looking at me with? 
Two ten. Lynn's the last it's the end of it. What happened? Did I miss something? No, you're fine. No. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Oh, there's a promise for those people that what that have been favored to unto death. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Ye
because you you were created you will you have the DNA you were created by God Himself, and that spirit you have is the breath of God that He put on you. The same breath that He has is the same breath. Matter of fact, when when John ten ten says that I come to give you life, more abundantly, remember that. That word life means so so means that life like the life that God has, the same life He has, which means He He doesn't lie. But see, we have we have a we have a we try being. We have a nature that wants to sometimes act a little funny sometimes and do the opposite of what God said. Eve did the same thing. God spoke to them. She 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 decided to listen to the voice of a, of a serpent than over, over the voice of a God told her. And we do, we do that every day. We, we we think, oh, you know, should I do this? Yes. Should I go here? No. And, you know, God's trying, trying to get us to understand what he wants for, for our lives. But we're still stuck in us, doing us. And we forget that we put in, we've been put on the earth to do him, not us. Now, of course, we have an option. We can live for our own desires and do our own thing and forget about the world. But that's not living life. Because you, you if, if you have God's DNA, for oh, God so loved the world that he what that he gave. You should, you should be a giver to the end. Not just your money, your time. That's the part of your The Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave. Which means if, you, if you're made after the image of God, you should be doing, you should just, not, people don't have to ask you with the tough. You just do it. Why? Because that's part of your DNA. Amen? So, you're getting quiet today. All right, so let's keep going. So around the throne were 24 elders, and we, we established 12 of them were the 12 disciples. Who said that? Was it Terry? Who was going to answer that question for us? The 12, the 12, which you had, the 12 tribe. And then we have, then Karen said, we have the 12 disciples. So all, all, all these have been faithful to the end. In the eyes of God. Maybe not in the eyes of the one. Maybe you say, Peter shouldn't be there. He denied Jesus. But yet, Jesus told Peter, hey, buddy, the devil has asked the father to sip you like weed. But I have prayed for you. So then when, when you get back on your feet, you, you, you comfort your brothers. And Peter actually repented for what he did. You know what? What, what's the key to the kingdom of God? Repentance. Repentance is the key to the kingdom of God. That's where everything starts. Because repentance takes what God did for you and opens up the door for you. Okay, so let's keep going on verse, verse um, around the throne were 24 elders. And in the thrones, I saw 24 elders sitting. What they were doing was sitting. People that sit in the kingdom in heaven are people that reign. They're ruling. They're rulers, Okay. So, and then uh, and, and, and from the throne proceeded lightning, thunder, and voices. Into the more than one voice. Voices. Because remember, they're, they're saying they're worshiping the Lord. What did I tell you before? The, what is the primary, what is the number one attribute of God? Which one by I told you guys? It shows up many times in Scripture. Holy, holy, and holy. Four times in Scripture it shows those three words in one in three passages. It doesn't say mercy, mercy. It doesn't, even say, it doesn't say love, love. It says holy. Well, everything that God does is based on his holiness. Look at this. Okay? So the, the highest attribute of God is his holiness, his purity. And from the throne proceeded, seven lamps, of course, we know the seven lamps are what? Are the spirits of God. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of the counsel, the spirit of might. And the last one is the spirit, the spirit of knowledge, and then the spirit of fear of the Lord. Those seven spirits, which is really one person manifesting himself in different ways. You know, I'm Samuel. I'm also a father. One day I'll become a husband, but I'm also a brother. I'm an uncle. I'm a nephew. I'm a grandson. You see, different roles, but I'm still one person. Hello. Same spirit that, that manifests himself, expresses himself in different ways. For example, the Bible says, and the works of the flesh are... Adultery is one flesh, but it manifests itself. And the and the, the fruit of the spirit is is one's fruit. They don't say the fruit. They say the fruit of the spirit is what joy, love, peace. Okay, one one person, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So let's go to verse six. Before the throne was a sea of God. Now remember, he's trying to describe again, and this is where people kind of get mystical because they want to go so much into listen. It's okay. You never even you can read this book 20 million times 
and then we'll be able to capture the whole essence of what God was trying to tell us. So don't get, you know, don't get, sometimes we get stuck in one thing when there's other pieces that we want to look at. Oh, that, that really applied to me. No, let me, let me show you an example. Let's go to verse, um, let's go to verse, uh, da, da, da. hold on. Oh, uh, yeah, let's go to verse, uh, Okay, see, okay, John says that he saw as if it were a sea of glass. Again, he does not say it was a sea of glass. He says, like a sea of glass. Understand, oh, look at that. Like, like the appearance of. Remember, you have to decode this. But that it resembled, it in, it, it, but it resembled that in some way. Fit, uh, yeah. He mentioned, what's it? He mentioned the same sea of glass in Revelation 15, too. So apparently to him, it was a some that kind of, you know, I can go to 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 uh to Walmart and, and get impressed by certain new articles that are there, and then Bruce can go behind me an hour later and see something different. Oh my god, this is not everybody's got different perspective because what they say, perception is everything, right or wrong. To him, it, it could have been the tools. To me, to me, be the books. I'm always buying books. I'm buying book. I'm a book one. So you know, two different. We're, we're at the same store, but what appealed to him was the the tools. Where I would appeal to were the books. But we're in one same location, the same store with the same name, and so John is giving. He's trying to you know convey like apparently he's seen something in the form of a sea there. Which I mean, I have a hard time because. Well, uh, unless it's raining in heaven, which there was thunder, hello. Don't tell me there was none, there was no rain. If there was thunder, there has to be rain. So did the, the, the others have umbrellas? <laughs> See, you gotta be careful. Of course, it has certain connotations. Now, here's what we, now that's, that's gonna get crazy. The verse, and in the midst of the throne, and around the throne, there's in the midst of the throne, were four. Living creatures. Here he goes. Now, th th this is the, the $60 million question. The first creature was what? Was, was, was not. Was like a lion. The Bible says, Hebrews 4.12, that the word of God is living more, more sharper than any two-edged sword. It's not saying that the word of God is a sword. Don't get that confused. It's using the... the, the, the the, the picture of a sword because it has it has a form of penetration. You understand it? A sword penetrates and goes in. So people look at, oh no, listen, don't take the Bible to hit people with over there with the Bible. That's not what the Bible's for. The Bible's to give life. That's the, the way gospel means good news. And so it's using comparison, saying like a two-edged sword, you using using the process of a sword. To, to connect it to the word of God, that the word of God has ability to come into a person's soul, heart, and separate the carnal from the spiritual. So he tells them, and the first creature was like a lion. Now, what is a lion type of? Tell me, a lion. You got some. Who said authority? Good, authority. He's the one that has all your authority. All authority has been given, to, remember, unto me. Amen? Number two, let's keep going. And the second living was like a cow. What do you think it mean there? <laughs> Another way they say cow said it was really a lamb more than a cow. But if 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 it was if it was if the original means that it's 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 a lamb, it's talking about the, the you know being being savior. Okay, a lot of scholars used equate the way cow to 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 a. A, 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 a lamb because it was Christ became a lamb for mankind to be sacrificed. You don't sacrifice a cow, but you show sacrifice a lamb. What was the third one? Man. Which means flesh, humanity. Humanity. We're human. We're human. Like, you know, Christ came down, became human. He became a man like anybody else. He left his powers and glory and he, he left his authority and came down. And dependent on the Holy Spirit because he was human as much as you were, except that his birth was by the Spirit. There was no man, there was no Joseph involved here. It was the Holy Spirit and it was Mary. And what was the last one? Fly like an eagle. What, what does what does that represent? 
high places. What do, what do we go? They go ascend, place of ascension. Okay. And number like, they're all like, and the fourth like a flying <laughs> eagle. The four creatures. Now, watch what all four were doing. Now, these are angels here. These are all angels here. We're going to see that. The four creatures, each having six wings were full of eyes around and within, and they did not rest all night or day or night, saying, here it goes again, holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Okay? Angels have a way to take over. If angels, if, angels, if demons, if evil demons, angels can go, in, can go into a body of a, of a pig, Bible says, "Beware, lest you um, uh, uh, you being be hospitable because you may be becoming, you may be, you may do, you may be hospitable to an angel you don't even know it." So angels know how to take forms in different capacities. So these are angels that are worshiping at the throne. That one took a form of an eagle flying. One took a form of a man. You see how they all? It's just all tr trying to. Everything's about describing who Jesus is. This whole thing is about Jesus. Nobody else. Whenever the living creatures gave glory and honor and thanks to him who sits in the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders, there it goes again, fell down before him who sit in the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, they also had to worship too, not just the angels. You know, we have a song that the angels don't have. We have the song of the redeemed. Jesus didn't die for angels. He died for us. Remember, his sacrifice affected us, not the angelic hosts. And so here, here you have you have the angels worshiping, but now you have the elders who are the, the 12th tribe of Israel and also the, the 12 disciples. They're saying, you are with your Lord to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by, you, and by your will there exists and what." Really. What's the number one thing about Revelation? It's about the, it's always about the throne of God. People, God is in control. Doesn't matter how this world goes crazy. No matter who becomes president, there's no guarantee. We don't, I'm gonna tell you right now, no guarantee that Trump can win. I'm trying to tell you that. I love, I would love for him to win, but at this point, no guarantee. Because if they did something crazy four years ago, they're gonna do something worse this time. And I'm telling you, don't put your faith as great as he is. He's my president. I still respect him. I wish you could, but I'm being real. My, my president is in heaven named Jesus. And he has control of this earth. And no matter who, no matter what child thing is put in that White House, my orders come from heaven, not from the man in the White House. So remember this, that when it comes to Revelation, it's about the throne. He's still sitting in the throne, no matter what happens down here. No matter how things are going. Let me tell you something, it's going to get worse. Things are going to get worse and worse for, for the unbeliever. But for the believer? Okay? Something else. Look at this. Going back to the four creatures. The first was like mm -hmm. a lion. Represents wild animals. The second like a cow. Representing domestic animals. The third had a face of a man representing mankind. And the fall was a flying eagle representing birds and fowl. So you see all creation. You see they're all, all four uh, 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 created beings. What does the eagle represent? Uh, strength, uh, elevating, going high places, because it flies in high places. Getting elevated. Is there a purpose why there's six wings? Uh, surfing. Surfing. There are angels. Surfing is like the top. You, well, you have the archangels. Which uh, there's only three of them. Well, there's only two now. So Lucifer was an archangel. He got thrown out the kingdom. So you have Archangel Michael, who's the who's the warrior. Remember when Daniel prayed for 21 days, and he says, my, my, "Michael had to come and fight the king of Persia." And then you have Gabriel, who came and gave the message to John the Baptist, to Elizabeth, and to Mary. So then you have the serpents. Well, you know, it's a different command chain of command. The serpents got more, a more, a little more, more, more known, recognized in the heart of angels than a regular angel. Okay. They, they each have special purpose. Maybe we'll do a class one than angels, but that's if you're into angels. 
it's mentioned later on that, that the six springs you got two of them that cover the eyes, two mm -hmm. cover the feet. Well, the, the the but in Ezekiel, they only have four wings. In the secret, they got four wings, but here they have six. And the other two flock. Oh, okay. But you can have two wings. I don't care as long as you got two wings. I'm happy with two. It doesn't matter. <laughs> if you have an angel coming to your door with two wings, how many wings you got? I, I know if it's an angel. And that's what matters. It's like it's so, so, you know, so picky about, hey, it's a visitation from God. And you know, an angel can be in a person's life. You don't even know it. Mm -hmm. But did you say, uh, I was hungry and you didn't and you fed me. I was in prison, you didn't and you visited me. I was naked and you clothed me. People don't stand up. You'd be surprised the people you come across every day. Even the guy that crossed in front of you. <laughs> Amen. Oh, we did good. Any questions, any comments you want to make before we uh remember this is just to get your appetite wet. I don't want you, you need to go back home and uh, there's a lot of resources out there that you can you can um but we went through a chapter in one class not bad I'm proud of myself it's gonna get deep though it's gonna get deeper only one scripture that says that angels are women they're their own men Except the one scripture in uh, Ezekiel. I mean, that is Zechariah. We're talking about two women with wings that are flying with the baskets of wings. That's the only scripture that has women with wings. What? What are you reading for next week? Chapter 5. Chapter 5. Chapter 5. Chapter 5. The book, five. the Bible, or the chapter 5. Yes, thank When you come to class, then I'll tell you. Then, I, then, then, then we refer to because the, the, that book has uh, everything's focused on all the codes. And you, as we get into the chapter book, you'll start seeing it come out like the tribulation, the great tribulation, the tribulation, all that stuff. Um, the only issue with 12 of the 24 being mm -hmm. the apostles mm -hmm. is would John have recognized himself? That's correct. That's not, that's another thought. Oh. Again, let me tell you something. That's why it's important, and I'm glad you said that, that. Um, because there's so much different schools of thought here. I mean, scholars, you go back and you say, oh my God. And then you read another guy and he does the opposite of what the other person does. So you got to have discernment. And that's why you have to, when you get, when you study this, you got to be in the spirit because he can confuse you. But for example, other scholars say that it's not referring to, to, to the 12 disciples because even John was once seen the, well, he, what, what, is, he, is he in two places at one time? He's, he's in earth. How can he see himself in heaven when he's still he's still alive? Mm -hmm. So for that reason, some scholars say it's, it's remember these, these are images, these are things that you have to be careful on how you come to enclosing with. But you know what the best way to do this? As you read this and you get into this, and the Holy Spirit speaks to you, that's what you grab onto. We don't have to we, again. I go to Walmart, I, I find books. He goes and finds tools. We're in the same place, getting the, we're benefiting from the same thing, but his thing is tools, my thing is books. Because when when, when I was born, the Lord asked me, do you want brain or trains? I said, give me brains, not trains. <laughs> that's why I read a lot of books. <laughs> but that, that's interesting. Again, mm -hmm. the, nothing is permanent until you go back home and you go back, hopefully it gives you a little light that you can now go back with the light we gave you. Oh my God, you're not seeing this. So, yes, Wanda, yes, Wanda. This is serious. Oh, so, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Prayer because a few nights ago, my, my right foot started hurting and I can hardly walk. I prayed with somebody yesterday over the phone. They were in the ER, they were how this took done. And I just found this morning they left the hospital. It's the power of prayer when we come together, touching on the same thing. So I want Anne, Gloria, and you all, all the ladies uh, get behind, get behind uh, Sister Wanda. And then we're going to pray.